You are now listening to FMB Radio. Radio. And welcome to FMB Radio. My name is Lindsay Collins and I am your host. It's been a long time since I read you something that I wrote on this podcast. For a while I was doing that and it was really fun. I was reading these kind of little vignettes um, and about restaurant life or things that had happened to me in restaurants. And it was, it was very fun for me. I, don't, I can't speak to how it felt for you, but it was fun for me. And I was journaling about <laughs> Stromboli. Is there a better word for journaling? Because even when I say journaling, it, it's just immediately I'm like, oh God, here we go. You know, but I don't want it to be that way because really writing something uh, is amazing for you. It's good for your health. It's good for your mental health. It's good for your hand because God knows if you haven't written anything with your hand in a while, um, it's hard. It takes a lot of work and you kind of have to build up those muscles again. I'm not, I'm like not even joking. Sometimes it's hard to get through the second page, but anyway, all right, let's just call it writing every day because journaling makes people (laughs) fall asleep. (laughs) Um, anyway, I woke up and journaled about a strong bully that I made. And so I wanted to read it to you. Are you ready? This is titled Strombolio. We had a pizza party. Julian made a menu. The fictitious place was called Bingo's Pizzeria. We deliver. Somehow we got to discussing the difference between a stromboli and a calzone. Out of curiosity, we made a snap decision to construct a stromboli, essentially a crude, savory cinnamon roll in structure. It was life-changing. The steamed ham, pepperoni, and provolone, raw red onion nesting with roasted red peppers, making their presence known while simultaneously blending in. Right before we pulled it, I brushed it with butter and sprinkled cheese and za'atar and salt. I'm feeling nostalgic these days. It was so good I couldn't stop eating it. Was I in a mall? Is teleportation possible? Had I ever even ordered a stromboli from (laughs) Sbarro? I couldn't say for sure, but in that moment, I regretted every calzone I ever ate. You could have been a stromboli. Why would one waste time with their insides writhing from the excessive glut of cheese in a calzone when you could have had the nuanced and layered elegance of stromboli? I continued on, sinking slice after slice into a ramekin of sauce, marveling all the while at the crispy golden brown exterior encapsulating everything you've ever loved about an Italian sub. (laughs) I'm going to make it again today to really have my fill, to feel how it feels to surprise yourself. Okay, that's the end. All right, here's the thing. (laughs) As I was reading that out loud to you, I felt um, like a sad, like, beat poet at some ice desolate coffee shop at night. Cause who goes to a coffee shop at night unless you want to hear something like that. But anyway, I did it. I read it to you. I posted that in my Instagram stories and I got a lot of um, very sweet feedback uh, about it. So I wanted to share it on the podcast just kind of at the top to not bury the lead, but I did make a strong bully. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, it's easier to cook a strong bully at home than it is to cook a pizza at home. I have a few theories. I think it's because the oven that you have at home is not ideal for making pizza. It can't really get that hot. Not hot enough to bake a pizza quick enough, which is what needs to happen for the dough to not be gummy. But when you roll it into a stromboli, it seals itself and then you kind of let it steam as it, you know, the dough gets cooked. (laughs) These are really technical terms. Are you writing this down? Um... And somehow that situation, the steam on the inside, it's more foolproof. It's not the same as having to have that really, really hot specific type of oven. It's like once it's all steamed and bread, like the pizza dough itself becomes the oven. Does that make sense? It's kind of meta, but you know what I'm saying? It made it really, really, really delicious. (laughs) And I just mostly, not that I eat, you know, detached ever. I usually try to be present, but a lot of times I'm standing up while I'm eating. I'm doing something else while I'm eating. I'm talking while I'm eating. I'm not really giving it the attention it deserves, but it just smacked me in the face. As soon as I took a bite of it, I was like, Oh my God, 
this is like, um, I can't stop eating this. And it was so easy to make at home. You literally just roll out a pizza dough. We bought one from Whole Foods and we layered it with ham, pepperoni, cheese, red onion. You heard all the ingredients <laughs> in the beet poetry. Um, roasted red peppers. You could literally put anything, but I will caution you. I made another one the second day, just like I promised myself. And I got greedy. I went too hard with trying to put stuff in it. I put some salt. I put some like braised broccoli rob. I put extra cheese. I got greedy. I, I put something else in there. And now I can't remember what, but it was like too much, too much stuff. And it kind of leaked out and then it broke the seal that was my little, you know, steaming vessel. And then the dough just didn't do right. It was still really good, but it wasn't magic like that first one. So if I can, you know, just caution you in any way, if you're going to make this at home, if you're going to go to your pizzeria or Whole Foods or wherever you want to get your dough um, and roll it into a rectangle and then layer the stuff on there and then twist it up like a cinnamon roll and seal it really, really good on the sides, brush it with butter and bake it on very, very high heat. I cooked mine at 400 or 420, but I have the bake, like convection oven bake setting on when I cook pizza or something like that. So it kind of circulates the air and gets everything really hot. Um, anyway, try it at home. You can serve it with marinara on the side. When it comes out, brush it with a little more butter and then do the sprinkled cheese all over the top. Let it rest. Don't rush it. And then just kind of slice it into these dashingly delicious um, pizza rolls. It, it was a game changer. Nothing surprises me, you know, as much as that surprised me because I just was kind of like, oh, whatever, this is a silly experiment. You guys know how I don't like to go off book. But I was like, oh, yeah, we got pizza technology. We have stromboli technology. <laughs> and it did require me actually looking up what the difference was um, between a calzone which I'm also known to love. I love a calzone, but the stromboli, man, it surprised me. And I kind of haven't had an at-home experience like that in a while where I actually just, you know, blow myself away. <laughs> Not because of anything I did. I think because it was such an underdog. I think because I had had no expectations of this whatsoever. So maybe in theory, now that I'm thinking about this, the stromboli wasn't even that good, but it was. But maybe it's just that I had been like, oh, uh, this, you know, I didn't put too much hope into it. I was like, it'll be what it'll be. We'll see. This is just an experiment. And I think a lot of times when you have that expectation instead of like, this is going to be the best meal I ever had, uh, you're, you're set up to fail as soon as you think it's going to be the best meal you've ever had. And we've all had those experiences. Like there's places that you eat or that you've had an amazing meal at and then you kind of in your mind or are unrealistic about how it's going to be the next time you go there and you go there and it's just, Oh God, it's gutting. It's terrible to just have that be let down. So I think if you have no expectations, that's probably a big part of why the Stromboli was so fire, but also it was just delicious. And we had a pizza party. <laughs> um, and it was awesome and I highly recommend it. But yeah, I wanted to start, start the show with a little, a little bit of reading um, just for fun, because writing is something that I've been focusing on uh, a lot lately as I get closer and closer to finishing this book that I'm writing, which if you're close to me or in my life, you know that I'm writing a book because I'm always going on and on about it, but never producing it. You know, no one's ever like, but where is it? Cause they just, it's like, it has, it's like an urban legend, me with this book, but I can swear to you, it's real. It has pages hundreds of them and they're almost done. But if you are in my kind of inner circle, if I've talked about it at all, the book is a novel and it's about a girl who works in Michelin star restaurants in New York in the late 2000s. You know, it's, it's not about me at all. I promise it is about me. Um, but not, it's not, it's not like a biography. There's so much, so much fake shit that's put in there down to a murder that, um, 
it could not even really be recognizable as, as my life or the people in it. But it's, it's a very fun book. I've been working on this book for two and a half years. And then all of a sudden the menu comes out and I was just like, Oh no. Cause I keep getting these messages from people who know that I'm writing this book. That's a long kind of a, a in theory, a similar storyline, but it, from what I've heard about the menu, it's not the same storyline at all. But I keep getting these messages of like condolences from people being like, Oh my God, have you seen it? Have you seen the menu? And I haven't. And not because I won't, but I don't want to cross any wires. You know what I mean? I want to finish my book. And if I accidentally wrote the menu, then so be it. But I don't think I did because I haven't seen the menu. And I've been working on this book for two years. So we'll see. We'll see how different my concept is, my novel is, when it's finished, which should be soon. Um, And then I'm going to start the process of trying to yeah, pitch it to anybody who wants to print it. So that's been a funny thing of just trying to keep in the process of writing every single day. And if you're somebody that tries to do anything that's creative every single day, you can get gung-ho about it. And then it's it's very easy to just be like, oh, fuck, I want to watch TV. <laughs> and so I've been um, the, the quote-unquote morning pages and writing and um, journaling about Stromboli has been really keeping my sticks on the ice to quote, uh, Tom Sachs. So anyway, I wanted to read that to you just for fun. And because a lot of you were like, can I have that Stromboli recipe? And I was like, it's, it's less of a recipe and more of a experiment slash accident slash game changer. Um, so yeah, it made me want to put more stuff in pizza dough and roll it up because it can really sit out. It can really be like, a a fixture at the table. If you ever thrown a pizza party at home, you know what I'm talking about. There's kind of a lag time between pizzas. The stone has to be really hot. So you get to this awkward thing where everyone's excited about the first pizza and they're like kind of tear it apart like a bunch of wolves and they're like, (laughs) and you love the pizza so much. And then you're like, oh, now we got to wait like, I don't know, 30 minutes for the oven to get back up to temp and get the stone cleaned off and kind of prep your pizza and put it back in. So it's definitely, um, there's an ebb and flow to the at home pizza party because you simply just don't have the oven. Even the people with the fancy pizza ovens, like I've been to some really, really well executed pizza parties at home and you still got to give that little break. So if you're trying to feed a lot of people, it can be, uh, it can get real, you know, grabby because people are like oh fuck I don't know when the next pizza's coming what is it going to be half an hour I probably have to go home by then if you're me and you go to a party you're like 30 I've been here 30 minutes it's time to leave um so I can't really wait around for the second pizza but anyway the stromboli was genius because it was an experiment I was like let's fire that off before people get here and by people I mean one person Nathan (laughs) came Nathan uh McClements came to the pizza party he was our guest of honor and before we got there I was like let's just Let's just fire this off now. And then it can sit there like a big centerpiece. And then when somebody comes there, you just slice it. You just slice off a piece. And then you got something for people to eat in the interim between the weird place where there's just nothing coming out because the oven's not hot. So that's my hot tip. If you're doing an at-home pizza party, fire off a stromboli early. And then it's like an appetizer that's not pizza, but that is pizza, but that isn't pizza. You know, this is just the kind of hot tips you can expect when you listen to FME radio. Um, I don't know if I'm the only one that aspires to throw pizza parties at home, but I do. And we've cooked a lot less pizza at home since quarantine was over. Sometimes I forget that that even happened. It seems so long ago and traumatic. But yeah, we cooked a ton of pizza here during quarantine. And then we haven't really like had the had the vibe to make pizzas at home, but boy, am I glad we did. Something about that steamed ham and cheese. Honestly, I could just have ham and cheese in a pizza like roll. Wow. I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. Um, but a, a lot of exciting things have happened this week and I'm excited to finally be able to start talking about some of the things that are going on this year. Fab announced its lineup for 2023 and I am so honored to be in it. Fab is... Um, a conference that's based here in Charleston for hospitality, uh, women in hospitality specifically, and it's run by Randy Weinstein. And it's amazing. It's, it's a thing that's been going on. I want to say it's in its 
fifth or sixth or seventh year. It's something crazy like that. Like, um, but it's a big kind of meeting of the minds and there's tickets available starting March 4th. So you can grab those then. Um, scholarships are available. So you can go to Fab's website and I'll link it in um, the show notes. So you can apply for a scholarship if you don't have the means to come or if you want to come. But yeah, it's just sort of a think tank with classes and workshops and panels from people in the food and beverage industry, sort of all putting their heads together to try to make it um, better, more inclusive, and more equitable place for women to be a part of this industry, which is something I'm in full support of. And I'm so excited and tr- and honored to be um, a part of the lineup that's going to be speaking or on a panel or you know, participating in, in some way. So I, I hope that if you're listening and you don't live in Charleston, it would be a cool opportunity to come and learn from some of the world's, the world, wow, I just got big with it, for some of the country's um, best and brightest leaders in food and beverage. They're going to be there. Like it's really is a stacked lineup. I looked through um, and you can go to Fab, um, their Instagram page, and it'll show you everybody that's a part of it. But it's pretty, pretty, pretty cool and I'm very (laughs) excited uh, to be a part of that so definitely mark your calendars for uh, the ticket launch and I hope to see you in June when fab is Um, it's happening this summer it always happens in the summer it's a three-day conference and it's it's a blast so get your tickets once they're available I'll keep you guys posted on when that happens Um, and yeah, Charleston Wine and Food is getting ready to release all of their events and there's going to be some things that I can talk about later, um, in regards to that. So yeah, keep, keep your eyes peeled because I'm doing big things. Okay. I'm going to be out in the world for more than 30 minutes. Um, I'm going to, I'm, I'm tired just thinking about it. Feel sleepy, but what else is happening? Oh, Rip City. Tickets go on sale. If you listen to last week's episode and you're not in love with Robert Pratt enough already, um, you can be more in love with him when he comes down here next weekend. He's coming a week from today and he'll be here for Rip City. We're performing in the show. I think I, we're first or maybe it's like right after Nameless Numberhead performs, but we're early on in the show and it's a stacked lineup. Colin Moss is in it. Nameless number and it's in it. Robert Pratt from New York is in it. It's going to be a party and tickets are available now. You can get them for, I think, 12 bucks pre-sale. And then at the door, they'll be 15. So if you want to save $3, which in this economy, I do. <laughs> because, oh my God, we could go into the whole debacle that was Jeremy um, panicking over the egg shortage this morning. We had an omelet and you would have thought we were just like, swimming in some, you know, fossil fuels. Jeremy was just like, this is a waste. This omelet, this, this is a, this is a gross display of resources by making an omelet. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if you want to save money so you can afford to buy eggs, get those pre-sale tickets. I don't even think I'm saying that right, but get this tickets before the night of the show, like order them now online by going to nameless numberhead comedy.com. Um, what else? So many fun things happening. I still am getting shots of people, uh, eating cream puffs. So I love that this is, this is just taking over the world. Everybody in town, um, I was in Baba's today for a meeting, um, at the meeting street location and I walked by a table and there were at least three cream puffs on it. Every single person at the table had a cream puff and it just made me happy because I also had a cream puff in my hand. They have changed the flavor of the pastry cream to blood orange. Um, So we're getting into those kind of late winter vibes, you know, citrus, winter citrus. Um, And it's a, it's a refreshing change. I had a, I had a moment of separation anxiety when the cinnamon pastry cream went away, but I'm, I get it. And I know what seasonal means and I know how seasonal feels and I know how seasonal can break your heart because just when you think that, you can always eat a tomato that good. It's over. So seasonal seasonal will, will break you down. Um, but there's so much to love about the blood orange pastry cream at Baba. So keep it going. Send me your photos. I love getting them every time I see a picture of one. Uh, it makes me really happy. So um, thank you so much. It's a short and sweet one. Just truth be told, 
it's Thursday night, 7.53. I haven't eaten yet and I've had way too much coffee. Like I haven't eaten. I mean, I've eaten today, but I haven't eaten since like four o'clock. So I'm <laughs> getting pretty hungry over here. I have to eat about every two hours. That's kind of, so I'm about two hours past that if my math is right. I don't know if it is, but I can't, I can't rewind the tape. I just have to go forward as if it is right. Um, but I'm going to go eat. I think I'm, I don't know what to eat. There's not, our refrigerator's broken. This has been catastrophic and I don't want to complain because I have two fridges. So like that already feels like I was tempting the evil eye. They were like, you have too many fucking fridges. That's why we're breaking one. So the evil eye has, you know, broken my fridge, but it's the one that's inside in my kitchen. It's broken. So every time I need something, which is constantly from the fridge or even just water, I mean, I can't even go into how dehydrated I've been since my refrigerator broke because I'm like, hmm, should I, should I walk out to the fridge in the garage to get water or should I just slowly shrivel up and die? And I've just been choosing the latter every time. And that's bad. Like I wake up in the middle of the night, just parched, just like a zombie, just like, (gasps) I can't even breathe. Like I've been out boozing all night, smoking cigarettes and running wild women. You know, that's an old joke. That's an, <laughs> that's an inside joke, but there's a man in my town. Um, I'm not going to say his name just cause he'll probably know who he is. I don't know if he listens to the show, but once upon a time we were all there. My very good friend, Will, who is kind of, you know, in his day, I think he's engaged now to a very beautiful woman. Um, and he's, he's settled down, but in his day he was quite the Casanova And we were all home for the holidays at a family friend's house. And this man just came up to him and said, Hi, Will, how you doing? What you been up to? Smoking cigarettes and running wild women. And to this day, it's like one of the funniest things I've ever heard. So whenever I feel parched, I always feel like I am Will, who's been smoking cigarettes and running wild women. Even though I've, well... I've kind of done those things, you know, in so many words. We won't get into specifics, but I definitely smoked cigarettes for a long time. So anyway, I know that feeling of being just, wow, so thirsty. And it's all self-inflicted because I simply won't take the extra 10 seconds to go out into the garage and into the outside fridge to get water. So it's been like, I mean, I feel like I'm, you know, in the olden days where I'm carrying water. Like I go out there with a large container and just fill it up and try to like live off that for a while. It's not easy. And there's no food. So I have to go out there every time I, and I, I cook a lot. So I'm like, all right, hang on. I'm like out there transporting stuff. It's almost like in a restaurant situation where you have to go to the walk-in and you have to kind of let someone know that you're going to the walk-in, A, because you're going to be offline, and B, because they might need something. That's how hard it is for people to get to an out, a fridge that's far away. So I know it's not just me. I know I'm not a lazy piece of shit. It is hard when you have to be like, get the scallions. Oh, and the butter. Oh, and the um, eggs. Could you also get the ham and the Ezekiel bread? Will you get those lettuces? And there's a small jar of um, Via Carota vinaigrette. Can you grab that and the Parmesan? And the chives, like that's just a few things that I need to barely get started making breakfast. That's not even the coconut yogurt and the satsumas and the the granola luckily is in the pantry. But these are the things I need to make just a regular breakfast. That's how much I eat. Or the juice stuff. I mean, my God. It's That's about five trips into the garage. All the while, the butter's just burning in the pan. So anyway, I've been having a really fucking hard time eating every two hours like I like to because of the refrigerator situation. And what's interesting is that it's not, not that any of this is interesting, but what's interesting to me is that the fridge hasn't totally died. It just won't get that, that, it won't get safe enough. It won't get cold, like to be safe. It gets cold-ish, like you're like, okay, it's kind of cold. And then you t- touch something or drink something out of the fridge and you're like, this is not, this is not safe. I cannot. But out of desperation, I've been leaving some things in there and just rolling the dice with my own health. I mean, who knows? You know? I'm like, whatever. Oat milk, who gives a shit? I'll put that in there. Iced coffee, 100%. Like, it's black iced coffee. 
what, what could go wrong? Even if it's out on the counter, who gives a fuck? I just can't go out to that fridge anymore. I can't, I just, I just can't. And so, um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really, wor- <laughs> really at a, at a loss with how to feed myself, um, with this fridge situation. So I'm hoping to get a new fridge soon, but turns out they're $1,200. So that's going to, I don't know how long I'm going to be just being like offline to the fridge outside, just shouting that throughout the house. I hope you're well. I hope your fridge is functioning. I hope it's safe. I hope you're eating safe and practicing serve safe practices and, and, you know, twisting up something in a stromboli. If you want to sponsor this show, <laughs> ah, that's the ultimate segue. It's like, if you're still listening um, and you want to sponsor this show, you should. This show, I just, I have to brag right here because this show, this little engine that could of a podcast continues to be on the charts. And this is not, I post these just to be like, no, seriously, I'm not making this up. It continues to be on the charts in the category of food and Apple podcasts. It's a big deal because there's literally hundreds of thousands of shows. No joke. I think there's like a hundred food podcasts just in the Southeast alone, probably more. Um, but yeah, it's a good podcast and it's about food. And if you're a food brand or you have something that you want to get the word out about, you should sponsor this show. It's my goal in 2023 to get this show sponsored just to say I can, because I'm like, and by just to say I can, I mean, just to stop doing it for free. Um, so if you want to help me out and you know, a sponsor or a brand or something that is up my alley, olive oil, oat milk, black coffee, iced coffee, cream puffs, uh, anything of that nature, sea salt, saffron, pasta. Wouldn't that be amazing? I mean, a pasta sponsorship, that would be insane. Anything at all. Hit me up. Hot sauce, hit me up. And you can sponsor this show. You can email me at fnbradio at gmail.com. That's E-F-F-I-N-B-R-A-D-I-O at gmail.com. And we can talk sponsorship. Or you can just send me pictures of cream puffs. That's fine too. Honestly, that's as good as money. That I'll just take that right to the electric company and be like, do you see this? Does this count? And they'll be like, no. And I'll be like, okay. Oh, so you still want your money? Okay. Well, fine. Have it your way. And then I'll pay my electric bill. But if you want to sponsor the show, that would be so, 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 so cool. And if that's like too much or you also have a broken fridge and you're like, I would, but my fridge broke and I got to use those resources for something else, you can rate and review the show. And so many of you have done that recently. And I swear to God, I say this every time, but it, man, it means a lot. And it's free. It's free to do. And if you feel compelled to leave a review on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify, I think you can leave them on Spotify too. Um, That would help so much. And thank you. Thank you for listening thank you for encouraging me to uh, write more about strombolis means a lot (laughs) Um, and I'll see you next week I hope I see you at the Rip City show January 28th get tickets click the link in the bio and get tickets and come see us and I'll see you next week bye 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 Les amis, le bureau